Hello guys, this is Linus Lima Yankee 2 Hotel. This is what you see is a W3DZZ dipole antenna. It's a very good antenna for beginners and it's popular since so many many years ago. I remember I used to have probably three or four incarnations of the, of, of the W3DZZ antenna in different shacks where I used to live in and all the time this antenna been serving well. So this is good antenna for everybody, including for beginners, but there are a few things to know. Stay tuned and you will know what I mean. This black blob here is a trap by Sota Beams and it's um, a trap which is wound on the toroid. I just covered it with the weatherproof tape so it looks ugly. In fact it's a very nice uh, trap made uh, wound on uh, a toroid. The high voltage capacitor is included and they act as uh, both a trap and the, the loading coil in some instances. So I'm going to put this antenna up on uh, another SOTA beams mast. So you see everything SOTA beam today in my experiment. I like SOTA beams. I, I'm not related or no, no affiliation with SOTA beams except that I spend my own money buying nice stuff from them. Uh, it's gonna be around eight meters up in the sky this video is my second experiment with the W3DZZ antenna. First time it was tested with the ICOM IC7300 and its internal antenna tuner. Results were mixed. Link to this video is in the description. This time I am curious about ICOM IC705 and the QRP tuner T1 of Elecraft and I'm in different location with different antenna setup. The SOTA Beams website recommends these antenna dimensions, claiming no antenna tuner is needed on 5 bands. My practical version after the tuning and pruning is a bit different and, spoiler alert, the tuner is very much welcome. This is normal, the difference, because my factors influencing the antenna, like antenna height, ground and soil quality, etc., can be so much different from ones at soda beams or even at my first location. All right, guys, so before we connect the antenna to my ICOM IC705, I connected it to my Nano VNA. Just, you know, to, to get one picture on one screen, what are the, the deep dips and uh, which bands this antenna is resonant, which bands this antenna is not, where do we need a tuner and where probably we don't very nice dip you see here but it's not the 80 meter cent central frequency and the antenna is resonant oops like here at 3.8 so it's actually in the very end of the band the next dip is at all right the next dip is at 7.05 megahertz so it's actually the central frequency of 40 meter band and here we have 2.98 all right it's still still a bit too high but uh well i think any tuner would would cope with this let's move further on no dip here no no dip on uh, 30 meter band it's not supposed actually to work on 30 meter band uh, officially w3dzz it comes from the ages where the work bands were not uh, not uh, given to amateur radio yet 11.5 SWR, so I don't know which which tuner would, would tune it. We will see. Next dip is at 13.5 megahertz, so it's lower than the 20 meter band. And the 20 meter band, like 14.07, is 4.6. SWR is at 4.6. So it seems like, you know, we need a tuner on all bands here. Now let's see another work band, 17 meters, like 18.12. No, it's the WR is still 6.4 to 1, very high. 18, 18, 18. Okay, let's move up to 15 meter band, which is like 
Okay, 21.09. Still 3.3 to 1 is the volume R. And there is a nice dip here, which is 21.6. So it's, it's, it's higher than the amateur radio band. Let's go to 12 meter band, 24.87. No, no dip. SWR is 5.8 to 1. Too much. And finally, so let's see what's going on on 10 meter band. Okay, 28.3, something like that. Or 28.1. Doesn't matter. It's still 3.87 the to 1 SWR. So, accordingly to my nano VNA, uh, no band is uh, good to work without the antenna tuner uh, with the W3DZZ antenna. It could be that's an idea that you know it's it's you you need a tuner on all bands, but but still you can you, you can tune. So now let's try the Elecraft T1, my good old trusty Elecraft T1, which is suitable to work with QRP. Let's tap and hold. Okay, perfect. SWR, you see, less than 1.5. Let's go for 7. Again, in the RTTY mode. Push and hold until it blinks. All right, done. 1.2 to 1. Okay, 10 megahertz. Now it's very interesting because uh, this this antenna is not even supposed to work on a 30 meter band because it, it, it's a pre-work times antenna design. But let's see. Okay, let's try. Okay, finally, it took some time. So it's 1.1 to 1, basically. No problems. Okay, let's jump now to 14. Okay, push and hold. Link, tune. Okay, no problems. 1.1 to 1. So Elecraft tunes everything, you know. Nice clicking. And it's done. 1.1 to 1. 21. Clicking, working, working busily. Okay, done. 1.1 to 1 on 15 meter band. So 12 meter band. Also not supposed to work on this band. It's a work band. Okay, trying, working working busily okay no problems one to one it's even you know better than the traditional bands and last but not least 10 meter bands we have openings nowadays on 10 meters yeah we have to go to rtty mode tuning all right you see green okay one one point two to one something like that Perfect. So, the Royal Signals Amateur Radio Society from the UK has published the W3DZZ dipoles antenna plots using antenna modeling instruments. Accordingly to them, this antenna is ideal for the ENVIS near vertical incident skywave, which is reliable communications in the range of up to 650 kilometers or 400 miles. My practical test on 80 meter band just proved this. LY2 Henrikas Portabilos. LY2 Henrikas Portabilos. All net participants were located at about 100 to 150 kilometers around me 
and all gave me a good 5.9 reports, despite me running just 10 watts off the ICOM IC705. Clearly, the W3DZ antenna is good for 80 meter rack chewing. Good for local chats on low bands, the Envis radiation, though, is not so useful for DXing on 20 meters and up. Accordingly to the RSA RS modeling, some low angle DX radiation lobes appear if the antenna is installed at least half wavelength or 10 meters above the ground, but a strong Envis lobe is still present too. My antenna was hanging even lower, so Envis was stronger, so I had to struggle for even a 1500 km skew so into Istanbul, Turkey. Lima Yankee 2 Hotel, stroke portable. London Yankee 2 Hotel, stroke portable. Lima Yankee 2 Hotel, stroke portable. London Yankee 2 Hotel, stroke portable. Lima Yankee, Lima Yankee, Lima Yankee 2 Hotel Stroke Portable. Lima Yankee 2 Hotel Stroke Portable. Lima Yankee 2 Hotel Stroke Portable. Roger, Roger, you are 5 by 9, 59. Roger, Roger, thank you very much, 73. Thank you, 73, bye bye. Okay, perfect, guys. W3DZZ antenna looks like working on all bands absolutely with one condition you need to have a good tuner. If you work QRP, QRP tuners will do. My favorite Telecraft T1, one of the best of the on, on the market probably, tunes everything and it works for many 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 years. Maybe 15 years I have it. So and it still runs and runs and runs and it and runs very very well. So I think the double three DZZ antenna is very very good antenna uh, because it's simple not probably that sophisticated and co or complicated sometimes like uh, like ladder line uh, because ladder I like I love ladder line uh, antennas you know on doublets and and they are they are the best antennas as it comes to the efficiency but sometimes you know it's uh, it's it's difficult to get a ladder line or it's difficult to make it your own if you want to have a multi band or all band dipole so the W3DZZ is the way to go because it's got only two traps, uh, only two coils, uh, and uh, losses are negligible, I think. So, I think uh, W3DZZ is good field antenna, good for beginners, good for experienced hams, and good for every, everybody. <laughs> you, as I did, you probably had this antenna, you know, for many years, maybe you're still using it, and uh, tell so please leave a comment in the comment section what's your opinion about this antenna does it bring you dx contacts and so far and so on with this said thanks for watching see you in my next video 73 this is linus lima Yankee 2 hotel cheerio